but you know I'm a, I'm a Catholic girl I came out here and this was really the first time I was exposed to it and when I was exposed to the divestment bill I initially thought it was a great idea you know divesting from war crimes because that's how it was presented but the more I researched it and the more I heard about it in the community the more it became about something else it, it wasn't about just simply war crimes anymore it was about who's right in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and you can't do that at a public university. You know, I don't really have a reason to be biased about this issue because I was never brought up in with my family having you know, known that much about Israel or anything. I mean the first time I learned about it was in history class um, so you know, there was no reason for you know, anyone to influence me on you know, having a position that's for Israel or for Palestine throughout my whole life. I'm just concerned about our school community. Personally, um, there's a kid who lives in my hall and he's Syrian and we've never had any problems before this bill came up. Like we acknowledge that we don't have similar views, but we respected that. And ever since the bill has been brought up, it's been forced into our daily lives. Like it's everywhere we go. And it's gone to the point where I can't even brush my teeth next to him like it's so so tense and I feel like it's completely caused a rift in our friendship and you can even feel the tension in our hallway when we're together. Uh, somebody from my from one of my discussion sections in my class um, I saw him on the other side and ever since then I don't think that we can ever even like communicate or talk to each other um, in class or even outside of class and like this is the rift that this bill has created in this community. It's clearly not, not a black and white issue. Um, there's so many gray areas involved. It's such a long-standing historic conflict. Uh, and, I, and I cite, just like the, the proponents of the bill do, the South African apartheid example um, and how the ASUC in, divested from South Africa in the past and uses that as a starting point for that social movement. Um, however, even with South Africa, uh, I, I really want to impress this notion that um, they took a year, they, they formed a, a committee, a general committee that went through and created blueprints, clear blueprints for the UC regions to use. And while I know that certain individuals have been working on this specific bill for a while, the fact is the Senate just considered uh, this issue of huge magnitude in one night. If South Africa took a year or even a couple months to create this committee, which actually thought these issues out, ha tried to hash out the debate as clearly in, in the best way they possibly could, um, it, it only makes sense for this issue to have more conversation, not, not significantly less by, by dwindling it down to just one meeting. This is clearly a different issue because we haven't had fights between two opposing uh, student groups on China's human rights policies. It hasn't resulted in physical altercations. There hasn't been this this tension that I'm that we all see with this bill here, um, and that's been evidenced by the the long meetings, the yelling back and forth, people crying at the meetings. You wouldn't have that with any other issue. So I know people like to say it's the same thing. Why don't we throw this other stuff in there? But the the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, a very intense conflict over land and borders that's gone on for a long time. Is, is not something that we should be dealing with right now. And I think the best thing we can do is use this as a, as a starting point, as a jumping off point for creating and fostering more campus dialogue. And I think it's just, it's just wrong that you should even draw that comparison because I've grown up in South Africa and I just, I find it disgusting that you could um, compare this to the, like, the atrocities that occurred there. If there's no tangible outcome other than pain and hurt between communities on this campus as a result of this bill, I believe it has no place in the ASUC. I feel as an Indian American in the community that the ASUC deciding what our views on issues should be doesn't seem right. Like Berkeley was founded on the whole idea of free speech and protesting and we have protests every day. and. 
forums and discussions to decide and talk about issues like this and when we have a Senate that just decides something like this for us without any input on our part, that kind of that goes against, I feel like, what Berkeley stands for. Um, you know, it was, it was pretty offensive just, you know, out of order talking and the way the meeting ended where they were essentially using a parliamentary trick to filibuster and waste, and waste more of our student government's time. But the one, the one moment that really uh, got to me was, um, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Roman Catholic and um, I'm pretty sure the guy in front of me who said this was a Roman Catholic, um, he said after a, uh, someone spoke on in support of the veto, he yelled out, you guys still killed Christ. And I sure as hell will not let that fuel any sense of any position on foreign policy, which, quite frankly, we should not be taking in the student government. Um, well, I think a bill that divests from all um, weapons manufacturers would be, uh, would completely change the ideology behind this bill. I sincerely doubt that, that student governments across the nation would would follow suit in, in a bill to divest from weapons manufacturers as a whole because I feel like that's, that's sort of a much more con like I, a much more like radical idea pacifism the idea that war shouldn't occur and weapons shouldn't be sold at the end when it was clear that their the motion to overturn wasn't going to be present um, senators were attempting to get votes on their side by you know adding countries such as Morocco or Saudi Arabia, just without thought, just trying to get the late minute votes in at uh, 2.30 in the morning. Last night when I was on duty, I had a resident come to me and she notified me that a swastika was drawn on one of the walls. And I reported it to the CPD and we filed hate crime and we've done all of the necessary procedure, but what's really disappointing is that as RAs, we're asked to build a community and we spend the whole year building that community and it's events like these that can tear it down. Truth is, writing a bill that's this specific against a country is just, it's singling out one of our communities that's represented here on campus, and it's going to, you know, make one community, you know, compete against another community, which is not what I want here on campus. I, for one, have never, <clears throat> ever supported um, uh, the ASUC taking a stance on such controversial issues because we have such a diverse student body on this campus and it's not right for the ASUC in my opinion to be taking stances that will inherently marginalize the community. We have a lot of flaws right now as a campus. Um, and there's a lot of tension and, and a, lot of, a lot of fighting back and forth and we need to resolve that first before we start trying to solve the situa situation in the Middle East. 